Masters of the Universe Revolution is a giant letdown, which is perfect for this entire series. The He-Man you know is dead. Prince Adam is dead. The Kingdom of Eternos is dead. I just don't know what to say about this episode. I couldn't care less at this point. Adam gets the power sword back and what does he immediately do? Share the power with Teela. So now she has Zor, Kar, Havoc and Grayskull powers. Anything else she needs? What are these abominations? I hate these new designs. Someone said it perfectly in a comment in a previous video. You know who you are. He-Man looks like a 1980s California surfer dude. Skeletor gives the most half-hearted growl. I'm right there with you, buddy. You have the power, Teela. You don't say. She's even stealing his catchphrase. You know, at first, I thought he was going to say, by the power of Greyskull, we have the power. But no way, Jose. Teela has the power. What a cuck. She flies now? She flies now. Nothing that has happened so far has been interesting or cool. I'm just watching this with a blank expression on my face as one thing happens after another. He did it. He said the line. He said, Master of the Universe. You know, usually shows do this once and in the final episode. But this one seems to do it twice per episode. These puns. And since when has Grayskull had a key slot on the top of its skull? There was one in the drawbridge. I hate this swirly rainbow effect that they put into everything on this show. It hurts my eyes. So Skeletor has a 21 gun salute for He-Man that works really well. And he never uses it again. That's poor writing. T? T? I haven't been so annoyed by a nickname since Raffi started calling John Luke Picard JL. And I still hate that bloody bird plane. I don't give a fat rat's toss bag about Evelyn's redemption arc. She's a villain, enough said. Man at arms with a sword? What happened to his bommy knocker? Is that a word? Does anyone else use the word bommy knocker? That's this thing. I guess it's a mace or a maul. These enemies are a joke. They're just slicing through them like butter. Where's the tension? Pathetic. Skeletor brings back the Techno Titans. Those things were unstoppable in episode 3. Why hasn't he been using them constantly? Again, terrible writing. We must flee, it's the Sumerians! Not giving off Breath of the Wild vibes. Queen Marlena flying a spaceship? I guess she was an astronaut and the implication would be a pilot before that. But after how many years? And now a simple fighter can take out one of these titans, when in episode 3 they could barely put a dent in them? Buzz off, snout, spout, Rio blast combo yet again. Did they do market research on which were the most well-known figures but also the least bought? To try to maximise figure sales? Is that Granamir or Gandalf? To be honest, I don't care if Granamir dies. He's a nobody. The Tri Sorceress? I'm happy to see Fisto and Mossman. The rest I couldn't give two hoots about. He Man just straight up gut shot Skeletor. But it's a magic gut shot, and Kaldor is back. Good old Yankee Independence Day corniness. We get it, you hate royalty. Stop making shows about kings then. Congrats, Adam. You've just made your dear old mum homeless. How the hell would you know what a politician is like, Teela? Your entire society has been a monarchy for its entire history. Oh boy, they saved a few bucks on these background actors. Evelyn is now joining Zodak as a member of the Cosmic Enforcers. I always liked Zodak's costume, especially the mask. And the scene of Adora slash Despara nursing Hordak back to health? Maybe the Shira spin-off can do it better if they can get the rights. Yeah, that final episode of Masters of the Universe Revolution was a 5. I just feel that they had no idea what they were doing with these characters. There was no consistency to their powers, 
Hordak was a galactic threat and then went down like a bitch. Skeletor was a confusing mess of Kaldor and Skeletor and the Horde influence. He had so many abilities it seems the writers forgot what he was capable of at any particular moment. I don't feel like that was a satisfying end for anyone. The kingdom is in ruins and now you're leaving the people to fend for themselves. Sorry we messed the place up, you're on your own. It felt a little cheap that they tried to make it so that Skeletor was dead, but also still inside of Kaldor. The whole thing seemed to be revolving around Teela's quest to get Paternia back so that Randor could have a final resting place. He-Man's arc was basically to give up the throne twice. Andra probably had a bigger arc, going from inventor to warrior to politician. Poor Queen Marlena. Lost her husband and then lost her home and her job. I guess the only happy thing was that Adam and Teela finally got together. But even that was cheapened by the fact that it was He-Man and not Adam she ended up shacking up with. What's going to happen to Man at Arms, Orko, Cringer? Maybe the new Shiro will expand on that. Anyway, I'm glad it's over because it was a huge disappointment, worthy of a lowly 5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.